Good morning, everybody. I'm doing a Bible st study on Hebrews chapter 9, so let's get started. When the, Then verily the first covenant had also ordinance of divine service in worldly sanctuary, for there was a tabernacle made, the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the showbed, which is called the sanctuary, and after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all which had the golden center and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod. I got a piece of hair that's bothering me. I'm sorry. That butted the tables of the covenant. And over the cherubims of glory, shadowing the mercy seat, which cannot not now speak particularly. Now when these things were thus ordained, the priest went first into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the ears of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying the way unto holiness for all was not yet made manifest, which was the first tabernacle was yet standing which was the figure of the time that present and which all offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did this service perfect but pertaining to the conscience which stood only in meats and drinks and divers washing in cardinal ordains imposed of them unto the time of reformation but christ becoming the high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands that is to say not of this building neither by the blood of goats and calves but by his own blood he entered into the holy place heaven ordained eternal redemption for us for in the Blood of bulls and of goats and ashes of heifer, sprinkling and unclean, sanctifying to the puring of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Jesus, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your own conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, which is the means of death, for redemption of transgressions were under the First Testament. They which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there also of necessary be the death of the translator. For a testament is a force after men of dead, otherwise it is no service to all while the testifier liveth. Upon Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses has spoke every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with the blood both the test tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things which are the law, plurge, Purge with blood without shedding of blood in no remission. And therefore it was necessary that the patents of things in the heaven should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy place with hands, but with the figures of the true. And unto God itself now to appear in the presence of God before us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as high priest enters into the holy place every year with blood for others for when for then must he often have sacrificed even the foundation of the world but now once in the end of the world he hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself and it is appointed unto men once to die but after this is the judgment so christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto him that looked for him shall be appeared the second time without sin unto salvation. So this is the true word of God, and I just want to pray that you be well, you be happy, and 
you have the love of Jesus. And thank you for joining me. Bye-bye.